Hi guys and welcome to the Tune It Yourself walkthrough video. Today I'll be taking you through each stage of how to create a personalised tune using the Tune It Yourself app, now available on Android and iOS. From getting the app connected to entering vehicle information and successful tuning of your desired car to both your handling preferences and chosen tracks. So, uh, let's get started. Okay guys, right, so the first thing we need to do is get you yourself talking to your Xbox. And in order to be able to do that, the first thing we need to do is click on Setup and Test Connection. So we'll click on that. And then we've got um, a pretty straightforward explanation of how we connect the phone to the Xbox. The things that you need to consider, first of all, you need the IP address of your phone, which will be displayed on the next screen. The data out port needs to be 20127. Obviously you need to have the data output turned on and we need to also ensure that the data out packet format is set to car dash. So we click next and then we've got verify game connection and waiting to receive telemetry. We know we don't have any connection. The uh, First of all it says it's waiting and secondly the animation above the IP address there that's spinning around is red. Uh, we want that to be green. So we are going to go into uh, options, go into the heads up display and go all the way down to the bottom where the data output is listed. This is where we do it. First of all, we turn the data output on, then we enter the IP address. This is the one currently being displayed on the phone. So it's one nine two dot one six eight dot o dot twenty nine. Okay, right, so, okay on that. The data out IP port needs to be 20127, and we need to have it set to car dash. So with any luck, if I hit accept on this, we've got a connection successful. Uh, sign come up, big tick, and the animation has turned to green. So we know we've got a connection. The app will now function correctly. There are, however, some issues where connections aren't staying on. If for any reason you decide, right, you've played enough Forza for today, or you just decide to play something else, we are going to turn off the Xbox. Oh, let's come on this. We're going to turn off the Xbox and walk away and come back later. So, Xbox goes off, we come back, and we turn the Xbox back on. Wheels firing back up. Now, because I have the option here to resume Forza Motorsport, this is where problems occur. If you ever resume Forza Motorsport, and then we sign back in and we carry on, we decide that we want to, you know, continue with some more tuning. If I now go go to set up and test connection. We've not changed anything, but we've got no connection. And this is the major cause that is causing people concern for saying they can't get it connected, or it was connected, but now it's dropping out and they don't know why. If for any reason you basically hibernate your Xbox or you don't fully restart Forza upon your return, the data packets that are being sent from Forza stop being sent. So you might sit there saying, you know, check in your IP address, check in the data port, check in everything else. We can go and do it now. And we look at this and we think, well, oh, that's not it. we look at this and we think, well, hang on a minute. Like, nothing's changed. The data output is on, the IP address is the same, the port hasn't changed and it still says car dash, so why aren't I getting a connection? And it's purely down to the fact that Forza has stopped sending data packets. This is a problem with Forza, not with the app. So what you need to do, if you're having this problem, 
simply quit Forza completely and then relaunch it. Now, even without changing anything, I'll just leave this screen running um, on the Tune It Yourself app. And we should find that as soon as the game loads back up properly, even just as early as getting into the main menu, this connection will resume. So we're just going to wait for that to happen. And there we go, connection successful. So we didn't actually change anything, we just restarted Forza. Please remember this is a massive reason that people are getting connection issues. And it's a very simple fix, just restart the game. And while we've got this uh, screen open, if you click on more options and then just go to view Facebook page, that will take you to the Tune It Yourself Facebook page where uh, if you want to, you know, ask us a question, if you've got any issues or concerns or whatever it might be, don't hesitate to jump on that Facebook page and get in touch. Okay, right, so we're all connected. Let's crack on with some tuning. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is obviously pick our car. Uh, I'm choosing the 2013 Mazda MX-5 Cup. I'm going to race this in the uh, MX-5 uh, Cup spec. Uh, so it just give me a, a rough idea of what I might be able to pull on the leaderboards. Um, but let's be real, this is not really a leaderboard challenge. This is just for you guys to see how the app works. So the first thing we need to do is click on New Tune. And from here we're going to see uh, tune name is the first thing that we need to give it. So let's type in um, MX5 Cup. That'll do. The units are Imperial, but if you choose you can change those, the options are there. Now then, the only information that we're going to need to grab from this is the weight of the vehicle, which as we can see on screen is 2435 and the weight distribution at 52%. Uh, at this point it's worth mentioning, don't be fooled into thinking that the app is being able to create a tune using just those two pieces of information. It really isn't. It's, it's actually using a massive amount of information, um, but to save you typing it all in, uh, we get the app to grab all of that information while you're driving around. Uh, so this is basically just for uh, you know ease of use. The only stuff you've got to worry worry about regarding the build of the car is the weight and the weight distribution. But there are a couple of bits that we can't grab from the game. So uh, one of those is the minimum and maximum ride heights for both the front and the rear, and we do want those to go in so that the app has got some boundaries to work within. And then also if you've got adjustable aero installed, then we want the minimum and maximum aero uh, forces available for front and rear. So let's go ahead and put those in. Uh, for the minimum front ride height, we are going to have to just back out of this and go into the tune. Just to make this nice and easy as well, I am going to reset the default tuning settings. And then we know we're starting from scratch. So minimum and maximum ride heights. The minimum ride height is 4.7 for the front and 4.7 for the rear. So let's put both of those in. And the maximum, I believe it said 6.8 for both front and rear. Cool. So that's how we're checking those, and we're just, oh, and then we're just going to put those, uh, put those figures in. The app will do the rest. We also then have to put in the uh, downforce so we've got minimum for the front is 50 and minimum for the rear is 75 and then maximum values at 100 and no doubt 200 okay cool right so that's both of those in the next thing we can choose is we're optimizing aero not the build but the aero for either grip, speed, or somewhere in between the two, which we've got written as balance. So for grip, 
basically you're going to find either the front or rear is maxed and then the opposing side will be balanced uh, to create uh, sort of an aerodynamic balance of the car. If you're going for speed, then either the front or rear will be at minimum and the other will be balanced again for aerodynamic balance. And then the balance option is basically sort of a, a midway marker uh, for either of those. This is a pretty short, sort of windy circuit. There's not a lot of high speed turns in it, so I wouldn't really expect a huge amount of downforce to be, to be required. I'm gonna go for a balanced option. Uh, so I've selected balance and the next thing I need to do is click continue. So clicking continue, uh, we've got a couple of things that it's asking us to do here. Well, we've got one thing it's asking us to do. We need to take the car to a, uh, for a test drive, change through each gear, revving out the first two gears as far as possible. To be fair, revving out the first gear might be enough as long as the rev limiter detected uh, checkbox uh, becomes ticked. Then we've got to release the throttle and coast in a straight line for five seconds between 50 and 60 miles, uh, between 20, sorry, and 50, uh, 60 miles an hour, we get there in a second. And then just click done when you're finished. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna back out of this. I don't wanna um, accept these changes. And we're off to test drive. Now this bit should be pretty quick. Um, you should see, um, you should see these boxes get ticked as we as we reach our targets. So we're revving out the first one. Hopefully we get a tick box on that rev limiter in gear one. There it is. Now all I'm gonna do is keep the clutch down, and change through all the gears I've got. So this has got six gears, and I've been coasting while I've been doing that. The whole lot's done already. That was pretty quick. The app now has every single bit of information that it needs. Um, we're talking power, torque, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff which uh, I just don't really need to go into. But it's got everything that it needs. So we're just going to pause this, uh, back out of the test drive, and then click Done. So we've got a new screen, Tune Status. And the options we've got here are um, chassis and gears. To tune the chassis, you just simply click the icon, and to tune gears, you simply click the icon. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll crack on and we'll get the uh, chassis done first. Okay, so click on Tune Chassis. And the first thing we've got um, displayed is a uh, base tune for the car based on um, basically all the information that Tune itself has already collected. Uh, so the next thing to do is literally transfer these figures over to the setup so that we can begin testing. So we're going into Tune and start entering these figures in. So we've got 28.5 for the front and rear tire pressures. Uh, gearing we'll do separately um, as you saw from earlier. So we'll skip that bit out and then go into alignment. We've got uh, minus 1.7 degrees for the front camber, minus 1.2 for the rear. The tow for front and rear has been set to zero, and the caster angle at seven. Onto the anti-roll bars, uh, 26.66 for the front. And that'll do. And 27.75 for the rear. And that's close enough. Okay, springs, uh, 647.7 for the front. Six twenty two point three for the rear. Right height is down at five point two for front and rear. The damping comes in at eight point two on the rebound for the front and seven point nine for the rear. And 5.5 for the front bump and 5.3 for the rear. Aero, we picked a balance tune, uh, so as expected, one of those is going to be smack in the middle. In this case, it's the front. 
and the rear is coming in at 94. That was a good shot. <clears throat> okay, brakes. We've got at 49% and 200% for the pressure. All braking will default to 200% while we've got this page open. Um, this is pretty typical of the leaderboard cars and most tunes. I'd highly recommend setting all your braking pressure to 200%, which is exactly why tuning itself does it. Um, if you find that the pressure is too high, my best advice is get used to it. Um, but if it is sort of unmanageable, then by all means drop that down to your personal preference. And last but not least, the differential. Uh, acceleration on 90 and the D cell on 34 so there we go those are our base base tune figures entered and the next thing we've got to do is start vehicle analysis so if we click on that uh, we've got a single lap ride height check to get done complete a lap to check the ride height of the vehicle if we go into a race setup, drop this down to one lap, go over to start race, and then we'll do as we're asked. So here we go. Just get a good, a good sort of race in mind. Don't be too worried about you know trying to go for gold right, right from the off. Get a feel for the car. See, see how it's handling. We'll be able to make some changes uh, once we've got a few things optimised. A little bit of oversteer there and there as well. So hopefully we'll be able to dive on that out in a bit. lap one done <coughs> so we've got a tick uh, on complete a single lap and now all we've, all we've got to do is click process telemetry so I'll click on that and it's suggesting that further assessment is required and before we do any of the uh, reassessment we need to adjust the ride height so we're changing the front and rear to 5.1 so we we'll just click continue on this restart at this point really important um, otherwise you're just going to be taking up too much time through loading screens okay and back at the uh, free play menu so into tuning and upgrades into tune across the springs and 5.1 is being requested. So we'll put that in, back out of it, go back to start race, and click continue assessment. And away we go again, so start race.
wide there. Also notice that the um, exclamation mark came up, so the lap is dirty. Do not worry about that. Okay, and over the lock. Right, so, uh, process telemetry, click that once again. And there we go, we have an optimised ride height at 5.1 and 5.1 inches for the front and rear. Um, okay, that concludes the ride height. Next will be uh, suspension analysis. Okay, so I've just skipped through the menu there. We're back at the uh, free play, <coughs> excuse me, free play um, menu. We know that the springs are optimised at 5.1 for front and rear. So the next thing to do is click continue to a suspension analysis. So the first thing we've got here, clicking on this, um, we've got, if I just scroll down, these are obviously the figures that we were just using. We can see the ride height is sat at 5.1, but everything else should be exactly the same. Um, but one thing we could be interested in, even after just a couple of laps, you may or may not be thinking this car needs to rotate a little bit more, maybe it's rotating too much. So at this point you now have an option um, to move the oversteer, uh, understeer slider, forwards or backwards, to manipulate the tune how you want it. Uh, we can't really see too much um, from, from the figures changing here, but if I just scroll down just make a note, 26.66 for the anti-roll bars, 27.75 um, for the rear, uh, and then 647 and 622 for the springs. Just bear those figures in mind. If we do change this and then scroll back down, you'll notice they have adjusted, um, as will the damping and the aero uh, and the differential. So all of those things will change depending on where you decide to stick your uh, balance adjustment. Now, I already thought that it might just be rotating a little bit too much, so before I go any further, I'm just gonna put a plus one um, just to encourage a little, um, a little bit more stability uh, with some understeer. So before I go any further, let me just double check that um, I've entered the new figures. So we'll go back to tuning up raise into your tune, that's all stayed the same, but the anti-roll bars have changed. So we've got 28.79 for the front. Yeah, that's smack in the middle, so not really worried about that. Um, 25.53 for the rear. Springs are at 660. Oh, wait. Uh, 0.4 for the front. 609.6 for the rear. Ride height is unchanged. 8.3, 7.7, 5 5.6, 5.1. Arrow is at 75 and 97. Brakes unchanged. And the differential 86 and 36. Okay, right, so with any luck that will be enough uh, to manipulate the balance to my liking, uh, but we can change this at a later date, so don't stress about it, you know, feel free to just pick it and, and go with it, you know, we can, we can adjust that on the next step. So uh, click start suspension analysis. And now we've got complete between two and five laps to check the suspension of your vehicle. Now, purely on the fact that this is a demo or just a walkthrough video, um, I'm going to keep this as quick as I can. So we'll just do two laps. One thing I will suggest, if you crash the car during any of these tuning stages um, and you know it's quite a catastrophic smash, Tuning itself will record the data from the accident and it will try and help to basically um, control the car during a crash, which is not really what we want. Uh, we want to make sure that your laps are pretty clean 
Uh, like I said, if you come off the track just a little bit, uh, like I said uh, previously, with uh, setting the dirty lap uh, tr warning triangle up, don't worry about that too much. Um, but another thing worth mentioning, it will also only use data from your fastest lap. So if, you, if during this stage, for example, you set it to five laps, and then you have uh, a mighty crash on lap two, providing laps three, four, and five are clean and quicker, then the, the crash that you had in lap two is not going to make any difference. If you're not happy with any of the laps that you've done at this stage, simply hit cancel, which I'm going to do now just to demonstrate it. So I hit cancel. All it does is just bring you straight back to this page. If you wanted to, you could adjust the slider again. No problem with that. The figures will all be the same, and then you can just hit start suspension analysis, and it's back to where you are. So at any time you click cancel, um, tune it yourself will remember the most recent um, an analysis that was made um, and, and go back to that. You won't have to repeat any tests that you've already finished. Uh, so you only have to worry about restarting ones that you're sort of in the process of doing. So we've got it set to two laps. It's receiving the telemetry okay. So I'm going to hit start race and let's do two laps on this, see what it comes out with, see how it feels as well, if I'm happy with the, the rotation of the vehicle. <clears throat> So back end is still a little bit loose, but don't forget these tyres have only been going for 40 seconds, uh, and it's likely that the, the handling of the car will drastically change once those, once those tyres are warmed up. Um, so if you were to choose uh, five laps for this this section, you'll probably find you get a uh, get better results. So even coming around those corners, I think already I'm happy with the rotation. Uh, now the tyres are warm. Or warmer. Okay, so two laps completed, and as you've probably noticed a pattern, just click Process Telemetry. Okay, so further assessment is still required. And before the new assessment is done, we've got to update the figures. So let's just flick through this nice and quick. Okay, tuning upgrades, tune, and what have we got? Camera adjustments, minus 1.8 now on the front, rear has stayed the same. Uh, you'll notice the tyre and caster angles are not listed in this new um, 
uh, in this new results page. That's purely because no adjustments have been made to those ones. So don't sort of be thrown out that they're not they're not listed. It's just because there's nothing that's changed. Um, so they remain the same. Into anti roll bars, 28.18. So that needs to drop down a little bit. 24.99. That one's spot on. 631.1 Eight for the damping on rebound for the front 7.5 for the rebound and rear, 5.45, and that's that. Click apply. Once again, notice, although I'm not going to do it because I'm happy with where it is, if I do change any, anything else, um, then arrow and differential is now listed because they have been altered. We'll go back to plus one, they'll probably... Uh, now remain but the figures should stay the same 75 97 86 and 36 okay cool right so let's continue the assessment we've now got to do another two laps so back out of that into start race and away we go again Just feeling better and better and better as you go, more planted. Um, your lap times will hopefully be coming down. feeling pretty good. Okay, so once again, hit process telemetry, and there we go. Um, Gin itself has now decided that that um, setup is optimized for the balance uh, that we've selected. Now the tyres and everything are feeling a little bit warmer after doing a couple of laps. Maybe it could, like the oversteer, could pop itself back into the middle there. Um, if it does, uh, if you choose to move it, you will notice that further assessment is now required. 
um, purely because of the change. If we pop it back to where it was, then it's happy that it's optimized at that balance. So um, yeah, there we go. That's, that's pretty much how it works. I'm not going to make any more changes to the rotation of the car. That's obviously um, up to you. Uh, you know, if you want to do that. But we're going to leave it there for the sake of the video. Back on restart. Uh, now then, when we click on to braking analysis, either one of two things is going to happen. The because the suspension was optimized on the previous run. The first part of the braking analysis will actually use the data from the already optimized uh, suspension setup. So upon clicking continue to braking analysis, it will either optimize the braking based on the figures that it's already got and possibly make an adjustment to, to those figures. Or if it thinks the braking is wildly inaccurate, it will ask us to retest it. So we're going to click continue to break in analysis. We'll see what it happens, uh, what, it, what it suggests. And it's not happy um, to optimize where it was. It wants us to change the balance to 45%. So that's what we're going to do. Back into your tuning page, all the way over to break in. And we're, we're going to 45%. So we're going to click OK on that. Save those and around the track once again we go. So continue assessment. We've now got to uh, complete a hot lap on lap two to check braking. So um, two laps is fine for this. You shouldn't need to do any more. Feel free to do to do more if you choose. Uh, I'm obviously going to leave it on two. So around we go again. I was feeling pretty good. Okay, so uh, process telemetry, further assessment has uh, come up again, so we need to drop the pressure, sorry, the balance down to 41%. Mm. 
basically what's happening here is uh, the app's checking to see which wheels are locking, how long they're locking for, that sort of thing, um, under braking, obviously, and then deciding what, um, what to do about it. Hence the, uh, the balance is being shifted. Okay, so over we go. 41%. Start race, continue assessment, and away we go. You never know, we could be getting close um, to the correct braking balance here. Okay, process telemetry, oh, further assessment required. Again, we're still getting way too much locking at one end of the car, so all the way down to 37. This should, these adjustments here should absolutely help vehicle rotation under heavy braking to keep the car balanced, so it's well worth seeing this this stage through. Sometimes it will take a few runs as it's doing on this occasion, sometimes it won't. It depends on the car, it depends on um, the track, you know, a whole manner of stuff. Not, not to mention your own personal braking technique, so figures that I'm getting for this. Ex this exact car on this track could easily be different than figures that you might get for it, um, because obviously you drive different to me. Okay, so 37%. Let's see how this one does.
You might not have been able to see that, but on the brakes coming into that corner just then, um, the car definitely sort of felt like I wasn't, you know, fighting the steering. So even just based on how that's feeling, I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that this is pretty close to optimised. Okay, process telemetry once again. Oh. Okay, right then. So, we've got a little warning come up. So, no brake locking was detected. As I said a minute ago, this is calculated based on what locking is happening at what time. So, unfortunately, because there was no locking of the brakes, I need to retry it at the, um, at the, the setting that it was on previously. So, it stuck us, uh, st like, kept us at 37%. We just need to go again. Uh, bit of a shame there, probably driver error. I know that it's looking for brakes to lock, so maybe I could have encouraged a little bit more pressure. Okay, off we go again. Deliberately being a little bit hard on the brakes there just to encourage something. Um, although I didn't feel anything lock, so maybe we'll give it a little bit more pressure on this one.
Okay, so what's happened here? And it's optimized. Fantastic. A uh, little bit of encouragement on locking the brakes there did help. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you should just hack it around and slam the brakes on just to make them lock. Uh, do drive with the intention of a sort of a racing mind mindset to it. Um, I think the previous one wasn't 38%. So let's just go and check that. It, it was obviously pretty close to being optimized and then Chin yourself has, has recognized that it was close and just made a last minute alteration which is enough to make it make it work. So 38 and no, I don't know. 38 and 200. That, I don't want that either. Thirty-eight. Okay, brilliant. Right, so from this point, just click continue to tune complete, and here we have our um, our uh, chassis tune values. So uh, we can just go through and double check that these are all as they are. Um, I would certainly recommend checking these. There's a possibility that the ride height may have changed, uh, so don't just ignore these. Do double check them. Uh, we're going to go through. So we've got uh, twenty-eight. 0.5 on the uh, tire pressures, 1.8, 0, 1.2, 0, 0.07, and scrolling down, 28.14, 24 28.99, 631, 582, 5, there you go, Lixie. Uh, it's even giving us a little bit less on the ride height, that's going to help us out. Uh, 8, 7.5, 5.4, 5. 75, 97, 38, 200, and 86, 36. And there we have an optimized tune for my driving in this car on this track. Uh, if you take this car, um, feel free to try it yourself. If you take this exact car and then try it on a different track, it will come up with different figures, it's almost guaranteed. Um, unless obviously the track is like pretty much identical or maybe just a variation of this one then it, it may come up with very similar figures but there we go that's uh, that's where we are with that so just click done and uh, we can now see that the chassis has been optimized so we're not entirely there just yet we want to do the gearing and uh, so that's what's next uh, let's crack on with that now Okay, so moving on to uh, gearing optimization. First of all, pretty obvious, click the tune gears icon. And here we go, complete a lap where you are able to maximize your speed on the longest straight. So what I tend to do at this point is let's just have a look at the, at the track. We can see it in the top right hand corner there. The longest straight, um, not always the case, um, but more often than not, the longest straight on this track is the uh, the start finish straight. And in order for me to complete a lap, keyword there, complete a lap, where you're able to maximize your speed on the longest straight. So that doesn't mean just get to your fastest speed and then that's enough, you do need to complete the lap. So, it says complete a single lap, that checkbox will happen as soon as we have completed one lap. However, we can see that we won't have been able to maximize our speed using one lap. So we're gonna leave the lap count at two. And all we've got to worry about now is getting around the track and making sure that we're hitting the fastest speed that we possibly can when we get to the, um, the end of this start finish straight.
Okay, so once again, process telemetry. And what we've got now, we've got optimized for. This is the first thing you'll see. You've got a choice of how many gears you want to optimize for. Going around here, I didn't even get out of fourth gear, so there's no real point me optimizing for six gear setup. I'm going to be changing gear way too much. Um, and it could negatively impact the car's performance. We know we hit 112 miles an hour at 6,367 RPM. Um, these are our uh, gearing ratios, final drive 5.46, and then as obviously you can see the figures as you work your way down. Uh, if you change these, if we optimize for four, we can see that the, uh, the gearing ratios do adjust. So, I think I'm probably just going to go with a 4 gear cell, it would make sense. So into tuning, over to gearing. And our gearing ratios are at 5.46. Two point eight five, one point six, one point one one, and point eight five. I tend to set all of the last gears if I'm if I've got six gears and I'm only tuning for four. I do just tend to set the others to point eight five as well. The only reason I do that is because the um, uh, acceleration 0 to 60, 0 to 100 top speed, all of those figures there will then be accurate. If I just change this bottom one, you'll notice the top speed will probably increase 126.5 now instead of 120.9. Um, that's the maximum speed that the car could achieve. We only hit 112, it's tuning for 120. So we're going to we're going to go out uh, and test this again. Now the idea is that the um, the car here, as we hit that 112 mile an hour coming down that final straight, um, the idea is that the revs really need to be sort of pretty much hitting the limiter. If they're not, then some adjustments will need to be made. Um, but we're not going to know that until we test it. So let's stick with those. back out of this and then continue gearing analysis so let's start the race with another two laps out we go to be fair gearing is normally sorted out pretty quick normally only takes what two or three runs at the most launch is instantly better didn't bog down or anything.
Okay, right then, so hit process telemetry and it's already determined that, yep, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, we're going with optimal gear ratios at uh, 5.46 with the final drive, 2.85, 1.6, 1.11 and 0.85. So, save tune and that completes uh, a tune it yourself optimized tune. We'll hit restart just to get us back to the I think I might have hit B then maybe I didn't um, we just want to get back to that uh, menu just skip through all of this um, but there you go that's as simple as it is guys um, basically all you've got to be able to do is drive uh, follow the on-screen instructions it will do the rest uh, if we go from here to main menu and then should we want to come back to this tune you can now click load tune there's our MX5 cup tune. Click on that, and we're uh, we're back to our optimized settings. If you want to, if you want to know what the settings were, just click on. If we click on gears, those are our optimal um, gearing ratios. If we choose to, um, maybe you want to try it with a fifth gear setup. You can hit reset gearing analysis, and then repeat your gearing tuning, and then you've got the option to change the the amount of gears again. Um, and if we go into tuning the chassis, there are all our chassis settings um, as they as they were optimized. Um, but you can now, if you think, oh, you know what, I want a bit more oversteer after all, you can then click that back. It does clearly say balance changes will require retesting. Um, but that's okay, you can then just scroll down to the bottom, um, click start vehicle analysis and away you'll go. I'm just going to pop that back to where it was. Um, and then that that is all sort of change click done and you're back where you back where you were um, so pretty straightforward uh, yeah there we go that's it one optimized tune uh, like I said it's it's been tuned for my driving style on this car with this setup on this track so don't be uh, surprised if if the setup changes as you move from track to track um, I'd absolutely recommend retuning each car you do for each track to get the most out of the suspension um, that's pretty much it feel free to uh, sort of stop the video now however if you want to hang around I might as well just have a little go I'm gonna set a five lap race just to see where I stand on the leaderboards um, and see you know what what it can what it can throw out bearing in mind this entire tune has been done just using the app so hopefully this will prove that it does work if it hasn't already proved that it does work but there we go and uh, so uh, if you're going to sit around and uh, and watch this then great i hope you enjoy it uh, and if that's all you're here for just to watch the the app uh, the use of the app itself then thanks very much for tuning in and um yeah i'll be seeing you cheers then guys Okay, right, so here we go, five laps. Let's see if we can finish somewhere half decent.
Good coming around there. Never mind. Cost me nearly a second. kind of gnaws this up as well, so I've got just the fifth lap to try and beat whatever time I've got on lap uh, two, was it? Okay, so 108.192 is the best I could manage in five laps. Well, I say five laps, I realise I've been testing it, but that was my, like, my first real effort at actual fastest lap. I'm sure I could probably go quicker, but let me know, I'll take that. Um, okay, right, so um, there you go, proof it works. Uh, seventh in Europe out of 52,000, let's see what the global time was, and 18th in the world out of, let's call it 100,000. So, there we go, not too bad at all, very pleased with that. Hopefully that um, just sort of highlights how powerful tuning it yourself is, and uh, I hope you enjoy using it. Okay guys, thanks very much, see you later.